I can't not be Chicago no matter where I am in the world. Our culture is embedded in sports culture. Growing up in the 90s when Michael Jordan was at the center of the sports world, it was just an amazing thing. It was like you knew him because he was in our living room every other day. That's the amazing thing about retro Jordans. They mean so much at different aspects of my life. May 6, 1989, we were just the underdogs. Like, everybody knew Cleveland was going to take us. And then to win at the buzzer. It was the Air Jordan 4s. He was wearing the fours in the shot. It's like some imminent spirit in the air. So I'm always in sneakers. I'm always in Nikes, Jordans, because that's what represents me. It's all about Chicago. Whether you're from the South Side and you love K-Swiss Classics, or you're from High Park and you love Air Force Ones, or you're all over Chicago and you love Jordan. The sneaker culture has been huge in Chicago for years. Chicago's been like an overlooked market for so long. It's just like the true blue collar essence of what Chicago is. It's not fancy, it's not gritty, it's like we go out and get it. I think Chicago hasn't been celebrated for what it is, which is arguably the most dominant city in fashion and sneakers. We only got um, 15 and 11. No 15 and 11? Can't not, do nothing with yeah. that. That's no, way too big. No. All right, all right, all right. Uh, what about those green ones right there? Yeah, these ninjas dropped these, right? 3X, gotcha. Me selling sneakers is me like being like the pastor or preacher. I give. You, it's like you get to talk to people. You know, you get to hear their stories. You get to hear their livelihood. Some people just see boxes of shoes and some people see inventory. Some people see debt. To me, I see opportunity. Awesome. Super dope. I smell my sneakers because like, when you get a new pair of shoes as a kid, you think you can run faster, jump higher. So what I do when I smell my sneakers, like imagine when I was in my youth, as in how that freshness smells. I'm like, man, it's like fresh air. It's like, it's just, a, it's just a feeling, man. It gives you a feeling. Real smell gives you a feeling. It's like, man, it just hits your lungs. You get high. I'm being honest, it's like a sneaker high. Like it's the best smell ever. Yeah, man, Retro Ones. This is where it started all. The Air Jordan line made sneaker culture popular culture. I don't know if there's ever been anybody in history that has ever inspired that many people to buy product than Michael Jordan. When the first Air Jordans dropped, the impact to the Chicago culture was like a nuclear bomb. Prior to Michael Jordan, everyone wore Adidas. You saw little spots of Fila and other brands, but it was an Adidas town. When Michael came into Chicago and started playing for the Bulls, the rest, you know, is, is history. Prior to that, we didn't know anything about winning. We were a big sports town, but no one had really won anything. You gotta think about it. You come from nothing when you're in Chicago. Besides being one of the greatest basketball players of all time, he represented the city. And then he stepped into the fashion industry and made his own shoe. And I feel like every kid that put on a pair of Jordans felt like that magic that Jordan gave him. Without Michael Jordan, I probably wouldn't have cared about shoes. Nobody wanted to be Charles Barkley. Everybody wanted to be like Michael Jordan. He made you think you can fly and jump. He made you believe. So true statement, Mike didn't think I can do anything. That's why I sell shoes now, because of Mike. People just looked at it as, oh, it's a cool shoe that Michael Jordan's wearing, but it's a dunk. It wasn't until the NBA banned the black-red colorway that people kind of went crazy over that one. Air Jordans changed the style of the city, especially with the red and black colorways. They kind of created the go-to color for fashion in Chicago. 
Black and red is the toughest you could get. It fits so well with Jordan's on-court persona, cutthroat. I can't think of a black red shoe that doesn't seem like Chicago to me. The entire black red color palette is known as one city. You cannot attribute that color palette to any other city but Chicago. So you have an athlete becoming arguably the most dominant businessman of the era, and what that kind of means to a kid from the inner city, especially in a city like Chicago, has to be the world. Post his career with the Bulls, he walked in a bar I was in uh, called North Beach Club in Chicago, and I was playing ping pong on the ping pong table in the bar, and so he came up to the opposite end of the ping pong table and was like, let's play. And I was like, what? And so I, I beat him. And so that was my claim to fame. I always tell people like, yo, I beat Michael Jordan at ping pong. <laughs> Don C to me is probably the most illest dude in America. Don has never had a bad day. He's a real Chicago sports fan, always repping Chicago in a really, really positive, cool way. I always looked up to him. I always seen him with Kanye, and you always heard the name, and it's just legendary. Don used to be on the trade floor at the Mercantile Exchange. Don I have on a polo, like fresh, like Ralph Polo thing. He have on a big Cuban with the Jesus piece, the Mercantile trade jacket, trade just on the tray, I mean, just picture that. When Don C does a design, he peels back the layers of what was going on in Chicago. He always pushes the boundaries and he always wants something different. If you give any kid like a pencil and a piece of paper or crayons, he's gonna draw, he's gonna enjoy it. All throughout high school, when other kids would start wearing the same Jordans I would wear. I would try to do something to customize my Jordans to make them just a little different. I remember 1992, the AJ7s came out, the Bordeaux's. I took my swoosh off my Bo Jackson's and sewed it on my Air Jordan 7s and then took my mom's fingernail polish and painted it burgundy so it kind of matched the Bordeaux color. So, you know, I just took that spirit amongst when I worked on other gigs. People always wanted to have a better version of what other people had, but they wanted to have the same foundation. Everybody wants a hat, but they want a better hat. Don C created a better hat. When I worked in the music industry, I was on tour with Kanye and Jay-Z. I would make them custom hats every night. I made one for Kanye, a bull's cap, and he wore it to the CFDA award. So that was like the first time people saw what was later to be known as a Just Don cap. And then when you look at what he's done, even with Jordan brand or Converse since, it's incredible. When Don sees Jordan 2 drop, it was the best thing in the world. He's taking shoes that have not traditionally been the most popular silhouette, like a Jordan 2, and he's adding quilting and adding texture and adding material that is making people covet an item that was not the most popular shoe for Jordan brand. The Jordan 2, no one understood. It's actually my favorite, but no one understood the 2 because it was a different design. It was handmade in Italy. It had the wings box, but I love the Don C. Jordan 2 collab. This is one of my grails because it's like, man, I was able to mix Chanel and Jordan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to be able to mix Chanel and Jordan, like, of course the hood gonna love it. He does a Jordan 2 and he makes it look like a Chanel bag that his wife had. There's always a story behind it. I'm influenced by different derivatives of OG sneakers and different characteristics. Jordan brand to me is old school, but I like to put like a modern twist on old school designs. He brings back shoes that the traditional public might not have even known about and makes them one of the most popular items in the world because it's authentic to him. People in Chicago will tell you that Don C captures the stories that were going on in Chicago through his designs because he lived it. People have a light on Chicago now, but the sneaker culture has been huge in Chicago for years. We've always 
had sneaker shops and we've always had retailers where you could buy the cool kicks. It's just that everyone thought New York was better, but it really, a lot of the same things were happening here in Chicago too. We, the boutiques, felt that we could change the culture because we could do it at a drop of a dime. The big corporations couldn't do that. Those are the true forerunners of what we're privileged to be working on today, the people that paved the way and just helped build the culture to what it is. Leaders was created in 2002 by Corey Gilkey. In the 90s, everyone was wearing Carl Kanai, FUBU, Peli Peli, but the trends had changed. A lot of people wanted things that reflected themselves, things that were really speaking to who they were and where they were from. At this time, there is this world that's bubbling and it's through the internet and it's through magazines and it's through music videos. And it just so happens that Chicago goes from having the best athlete of all time to maybe the most influential artist of all time with Kanye West. In the sneaker culture world, the hero went from the sports athlete to the musician when hip hop became as big as it is today. Hip hop is like the unifying median of everything. Sports culture is hip hop. Fashion culture is hip hop. In urban music, everybody dressed the same. Like it was baggy jerseys, baggy jeans, and you had this one guy wearing a pink polo and slightly fit jeans and a different kind of sneaker. He had his own look and he wouldn't change it. Kanye made me want to get cocky. I felt like I could express myself through my fashion and he made me feel okay to do that. It just give you a whole nother type of sauce. Like you could walk in the room and not say nothing and your outfit speak for itself. It's like you can look different and dress different and still be accepted by mainstream. Then he came out with his own shoe line. It was like history. When Kanye first dropped the shoe, it was like so revolutionary because it was his own shoe. It was nothing ever done like that. An artist getting a shoe, like in this era, it was just unheard of. It was the first time a non-athlete made a splash that large with this shoe, and the shoe was amazing. And you looked at it and you said, that is different than any other shoe that's ever came out. It was definitely inspired by Kanye growing up in Chicago. It was the Jordan 3 Soul. It's just like, Jordan 3 Soul, let me put like the future on top of it. That shoe lines down the streets, everything, the energy of it. I think that was resale heaven, if you can get it. Like, people pay their rent. When those shoes were dropping, you were calling your friends and you had no shame trying to get that shoe. Like, our phone would not stop ringing. I think for like two weeks, we had to just take, had the phone off the hook. We didn't take any calls. Listen to me, relationships were tarnished on the release of that shoe, believe me. Kanye is an amazing creator, but he's so larger than life that people get tired of it. They, they like, oh, I know Kanye. Who's really doing it? Kanye doing everything. Usually when a musician or even an athlete gets a collab with a brand, they just do like a colorway on the brand. If you look at what he's done with Adidas, he's literally created his own shoes. Man, look at this. People don't know, the bootleg man tried to bootleg these, he couldn't even get it right. So you've noticed all the Yeezys, this shoe when he first came, I had the lace down the middle of it. He wanted to feel like socks. He wanted to feel real comfortable. And it's the first time they started using the Boost technology. The turtle dove was everything to me. I was super excited. This was after Kanye left Nike. And I was just excited just to see him do something different. At the time, everybody was more about running and just being comfortable. And that shoe was amazing. What made Kanye so fascinating is while he was a musician, he was also an artist that had a different perspective on product, that had a different perspective on fabric. And I don't know if we've really seen someone like that. You're not gonna stop Kanye. You're not gonna control Kanye. Like Michael Jordan, you're not gonna control Michael. So Michael Jordan inspires an entire kind of population. You have this underdog kind of artist coming out of Chicago in Kanye. And now you have artists, like actual designers, that are now the most popular. Look at sales. The most popular shoes are Virgil's off-white Nike shoes, period. That is the most sought after item in the world. It's not a recording artist. It's not an athlete by himself. It is someone's unique touch that is done through the lens of design. He was into skateboarding and DJing and he kind of picked inspiration from all these different touch points of culture and you see it in his designs. 
Me and Virgil, we were just touring all the time. So we would just see things like, yo, we in Japan, we need this. Well, we wanted our friends back home to be able to see through the lens of product, the things that we were privileged enough to see all over the world. The Off-White collab blew up because the dotted line to Kanye. The cosign between Virgil and Kanye and then the other dotted line to Don C, you know, kind of made it part of the same family. With Kanye insisting on, you know, his fashion and his kind of perspective, I think it helped give a voice to guys like Virgil and Don. There's stories about attending a Louis Vuitton fashion show and like Virgil not being able to get in and like Kanye getting him in. And then this guy's the creative director of Louis Vuitton now. Like that's impossible. Man, I'm just happy that people in my circle and my friends have been able to surpass their dreams and be able to rep the city. There's like a thread of commonality through all of them. You know, Don and Virgil are friends. Don and Kanye are friends. Kanye and Virgil are friends. In most cultures and cities, all these guys would hate each other. Rather than competing with each other, the city of Chicago has bred people that work with each other. We the second biggest city, but we have to get overlooked so much because we don't have like the East Coast or West Coast because them coasts to get all the imports there. We're kind of homegrown. Everything here is built from without, so it's really hard worked in and gritted. Like I said, Michael Jordan, Chicago, we worked hard and grinded. The evolution of popularity is now looking at designers. The people that grew up in Chicago really kind of came up to become creatives that can provide a spin to product, that can provide a different perspective and materialization to product. When you have people who live the culture, take cues from the city, take cues from product design, understand Jordan's significance. These guys are putting stories from growing up in Chicago into product and the story is the cool part. When you think about the team right now, Michael was the original inspiration. Kanye is the leader of the new school, if you will. And he helped create this platform for other Chicago creatives to be accepted in fashion and to have a voice. Leaders is really important because they wanted the forerunners of it. Prior to 2002, there was a low in the marketplace for cool brands in Chicago. Urban apparel was dying and people were looking for what was next. Thus the name Leaders. We were way ahead of the curve. I mean, it's called streetwear now. It wasn't called streetwear. Diego been around forever. Like I call him Grand Diego Sneakers. Like he's been doing this before anybody. Like he gave me my first job. And think I've been doing this 25 years. So imagine how long he's been doing it, 30. I broke into the sneaker game in 1988. If you'd have told me then that I would still be here doing it, I'd have told you you were, you were crazy. I wanted to be an attorney. It really was me just walking into a store, looking at shoes, and I already knew all the shoes on the wall because I had been kind of studying, I just didn't really know it. I needed a job, and my man Diego put me on in the space, and so, I was able to kind of switch out what I was selling. I went from selling to selling clothes. Fly was open 2003 in the old Harper's Court. When Leaders opened, like we were around the corner from each other. I was a young guy. I really didn't know what I wanted to do in this industry, in this world. And I walked into this store of Leaders, kind of decided that that's where I wanted to work. So I just started working there for free. And I turned that into an opportunity and I ended up being there for 10 years. In Chicago, somehow it created a culture where they just wanted to work together and they used each other's platforms to elevate the entire group. Leaders is important. Tony Sports is important to Chicago culture. Fat Tiger Workshop is important to Chicago culture. Success is important to Chicago culture. Fashion Geek is important to Chicago culture. Those are the curators of what the culture is today. Fashion Geek has always been about color. Yeah, this shoe right here is my reasonable doubt. This is my Jay-Z album because this, what I tell everybody, it took my whole life to do. When I first started the brand, I was broke. Sometimes I didn't have no way even to stay. I stayed on Vic Lloyd couch. Vic Lloyd was a part of my brand to start off. Vic Lloyd, that's my OG too, you know what I'm saying? We've been friends for over 10 years. Vic has always been a forerunner of what we've been doing from Chicago. Like he paved the way for Joe Fresh Goods. 
our Leaders Reebok Reverse Jam. Um, we did this shoe in a collaboration between Leaders, Reebok, and CTA, which is Chicago Transit Authority. The map of the CTA is on the sole. When you put two shoes together, you get our transit map. As we've grown over time, we still do what we love doing, which is sneakers and fashion. We're still in the same realm that we grew up in, and we're still making these same things. This is where we different from other cities. We're all friends. There's no competition. We all talk to each other. We all help each other. We all promote each other. It's a family deal. I know in other cities, that doesn't happen. It really is fascinating to see kind of how they collectively work together. But it's always a tribute to sport. Sports is like one of the major unifying factors on the earth. I see a guy at a bar that comes from a completely different background as me. But if we're both Kobe Bryant fans and Kobe hits that shot, we're gonna hug each other. And so winning a championship is like delivering a successful collection. The concept behind a 312 I thought was dope. The fact that he mixed the Jordan 1, 2, and 3, and 312 is like the original Chicago area code, it was amazing. Joy Brand challenged me to come up with something new. So I told the team, I said, yo, can you put an AJ1 on a three soul? And when I get there, I'm gonna finish the rest. And so, I mean, I cooked up this shoe in one day. We looked at, you know, the original Jordan 3 and added training elements to it. Straps, you know, in the forefoot. And I think that that shoe's done a, a phenomenal job of kind of evolving the legacy of Jordan Brand too. When I came up, I was a Nike head. Now kids wear everything. I really love that everything is looked at as being cool and its own thing. And together, that's Chicago. Anyone in design who is at a superior level is always trying to get to Jordan level. It's, it's a phrase that you hear in everyday life, this is Jordan level, this is Jordan level. People carry the MJ attitude in Chicago because you saw it. You really saw the work ethic and knowing that, you know, nothing comes easy that you have to work for it. Where's went from the worker? to the boss. Down went from the worker to the boss. Kanye went from the worker to the boss. Myself, from the worker to the boss. The Chicago way, bro. We start at the bottom, go to the top. We gang Al Capone, we gangsters, baby.